This playthrough is rated T for teen. Who's calling me? Greetings and salutations, viewers. Welcome back here with another episode of Darkfall, The Journal. In the last episode, we started the game and got stuck on this place. But before I go any further... Hello? It knows what you're doing. You should leave. Your brother's waiting for you, don't you know? Don't worry, you might be joining him soon. I think I just got threatened by a ghost. I'm not sure. But anyway, the last episode we started our journey. We're looking for our brother who's working on this hotel station and was going to boot it back up again. But unfortunately, he's disappeared, so we need to find him. So, but yeah, that phone uh, will ring over the course of the game, and you can come back and check on You'll get a couple of different messages. I don't know how many different ones, but I know there's a few of them. That was one of them. Uh, so let's go back. But anyway, yeah, we we're basically just trying to find information about our brother and see where things are going so let me do this again i didn't finish it out last time so let's see i need to move it or is it this one now oh, maybe it's over maybe it's supposed to move this over let's see I thought it was uh, the one that I had to move over here but I, you can tell if it's right if someone says something when you do it yeah, let me see um paper, pa paper costs money baby so don't waste it stop doodling and drawing on it uh huh. And the reason you're supposed to know how to do that is because the every, whatever fits those numbers, so they have to be in the middle of this thing. Paper costs money, Betty, so don't waste it. Stop doodling and drawing on it. Okay, so wasting money, but we had to do that till that was responsive, so... Yeah, I forgot to do that last time, so... Alright, anyway, we're done with that. Alright, let's head on upstairs and see what we can find. Ooh. That wasn't creepy. <laughs> I'm not scared. You're scared. Uh, uh. All right, let's go upstairs. We can't explore this floor, but we'll go to the top floor first. We have to come back down this way anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Interesting. So I'm playing the violin around here. Hello. I think I just wet myself. Nah, but uh, uh that was scary, man. Ooh, scary. All right, let's keep going up one more. Now it looks like this is the fourth floor. Okay, so there's four floors in this place. So let's go back downstairs. We want to start with the third floor first. Yeah, that was a that was a pretty cool sequence with the lights turning off and the sound and everything like that. I couldn't move or do anything. You had to let it let it ride while I was there. Oh. Someone was told not to run with scissors, so they just decided to throw it into the wall, huh? Alright, let's see what's in here. So yeah, we can ooh, a hanger. Hopefully we won't be doing any specific type of hanging if you know what I mean. It's like uh someone getting up on the beach or something like that. I'm not sure. Over here. And someone was here at one point. They left their hangers. Man, I have a million hangers in my house. It's crazy. Station Hotel. Date 12th of April, 47, 9 o'clock. Two co coverts, two table, two number two tables. Order broth, pickle, dumplings, goose, and tart, I think. Total $2.46. Man, if only I could get a meal these days, I was that, that cheap. But, uh, nope. 
The hotel station is pleased to announce the opening of the new dining rooms designed by the late Arthur Johnston of Dowerton. Guests can relax during breakfast with the restaurant open to all in the evening from 6 o'clock. The Bible. Is it Gidgeon's Bible? No. I guess we just see it's a Bible, so well, a lot of hotels would usually have them in their drawers back in the day, so I don't know about nowadays. I know that was a thing for the longest, longest time. Even more scariness. Hmm? Who's there? Yeah, what's this? A uh, picture. Looks like an old house or something. That was it. Hastings Rooftops by George Crabtree. Hmm. That was the guy who owned the place, right? Let's see, clock. What a strange clock. It's got buttons on it. Uh, yeah, we can see it right here. Hmm. Okay. I was planning to come straight You're through. You're very nosy, you. aren't you? Poking around in other people's things. Now, who's saying that? Someone's saying it. You can tell that there's a uh, paranormal activity with that thing beeping. An electric magnetic source within two meters. I was planning to come straight through to you, but something here has caught my imagination. I am in a grim hovel somewhere between Dorchester and Weymouth. Why, I hear you scream. Well, don't worry not, my friend. I may be arriving a rich woman at uh, State Ives. No, I've not met a rich Dorset man. The only man here is not the sort to be seduced by me or any woman come to that. Instead, the newspaper clippings have proved more valuable than I could ever have imagined. I will tell you more over, prim over prims on the beach. Oh, I do so long for the sand and sun. This hotel is evil. Evil? I just, I just not. You can feel it in the air. A dank, dark evil, that fool Crabtree, the very queer fellow I mentioned, thrust this piece of thick, smelly paper in my hand earlier. I was in the dining room at the time. Dining room. Ha! Huh, they wish. He said, hide it. Hide it in your room. Your life may depend on it, stupid man. I told him to leave drama to the experts. I've hidden it none the less here in this yucky room. I discovered that there is one moment there's something at the door. I wonder what happened with that. Eleanor Van Vandelise, The Watchtower, West B Beach, St. Ives, Cornwall. Dearest Eleanor, oh, those fiends, those fiends! The critics were intolerable, and the audience was worse. They laughed me off the stage. Dearest Quentin has sent me some cuttings from the London rags. One even dares to say that people only turned up for, up for a laugh. Someone must have, uh, must have it in for me, for my brilliance was effortlessly brilliant. Or, my performance was effortlessly brilliant. You may have read that I have fled London. This is not true at all. I have just, um, fled London for the time being. Wait, shouldn't you have said it worded differently? Okay, anyway. So, of course, I thought, who better to visit than my dear friend, uh, Ben something, and then it was switched to Eleanor. Spent some quality time in the lovely St. Ives. I guess that's a lady there. I guess she was an actor, actress. Uh, I wonder who that actually is, like, if that's, like, stock footage or if that's, uh, someone the guy knew when he made it together, so... Yeah, it's hard to say, really. What a strange clock. Oh. It's got buttons on it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that yet. Let's look around first, though, before we do anything else. So, Let's see. Picture of boats and stuff. Uh, Hastings Old Town by George Crabtree. Okay. Matilda Fly, the two faced what bride. Best? What was that? She looked her best? Hold on. One of my best. There we go. Matilda Fly, the two faced bride of Bodmin Moore, the Empire Theatre. Empire Theatre London presents Michael Ivans and Matilda Fly, the two faced bride of Bodmin Moore by Quentin Caruza. Huh. Let's back up. Oh, there's a missing picture there. Uh, Hastings Beach by George Crabtree, 9355. Oh, I really like boats, huh? Hello. Matilda Fly, room 2B, the Station Hotel, Station Road, Dowerton, West Dorset. Huh. Wind Biscuits. Uh, let's see. Sly Fox strikes again. The female bank robber, known only as Sly Fox, has struck again in city. 500 pounds was stolen from a bank of Lithgate. 
This brings the total number of robberies to 12. Sly Fox, as Scotland Yard calls her, is thought to have escaped through the back streets towards the River Thames, where an accomplice was waiting in a car. Anyone with information should contact the police immediately, and a $150 reward is offered. Writer confirms that the show must end by Cordelia Crimson Smythe. West End played, the two-faced bride, bride at Bodmin Moor has come to a swift end. The decision was taken by the play's writer, Quentin Caruza, and the management of the Empire Theatre. The news follows after the dramatic disappearance of lead actress Matilda Fly during the last Friday's show. Fellow lead performer Michael Ivins is said to have started some, uh, uh, stated some people that are born to act, others are born to bore. Fly is one of the latter creatures. As yet, it is unknown where Miss Fly had flown to. No close friends could be found for comment. In fact, no friends could be found at all. Though a station porter at Paddington Station claims to have seen the actress board a train for Weymouth late at the Friday night, no evidence could be found to support this story. Fly has shown, flown the disaster. There are also rumors that the theater managers are consulting bar barristers with a plan to make take Miss uh, Fly to court over loss of revenue. They claim the play was proving very popular with the comedian fans, though the play was written as a tragedy. Kind of reminds me of the producers or something. The writer Quentin Caruso couldn't comment on his play, stating only that he was prepared to accept other interpretations of his work. More support needed for Tube. The London Tube Workers Association stated that more something something. <laughs> All right, that's the same. Uh, let's see. United's Breakfast, Scotland's Finest Selected. Uh, Matilda Fly flees uh, London after bad reviews by Barry Hilton. Stage and screen actress Matilda, actress Matilda Fly literally flew from the stage of her, her latest play last night after the audience began to laugh during what was supposed to be a death scene. Miss Fly is, or was, starring in The Two-Faced Bride to Bodmin Moore with Michael Ivins. Critical audience appreciation has been famously poor since its opening. A Good Hoot. A new comedy is drawing the art-loving crowd this week, though it's not supposed to be humorous. Quentin Caruso's new play at the Empire Theater is proving too much to resist. Matilda Fly, turn as the wife, has some audit members of the audience rolling around in fits of laughter. It is not yet known if Miss Fly's intentions was to act as such a spectacle. All right. Empire Play hits new low by Rudolph the Ripper. scoundrels. As the curtain fell last night after the opening of the new Empire Bay, the two-faced bride of Bodmin Moore, I feel rather sorry for the lead actress, Matilda Fly. It's only lasted a few minutes. Then I joined the audience in a chorus of boos and hisses. Her, her agent should be shot. Better still, someone should shoot Miss Fly, putting her out of her miserable acting career for once and for all. For it is without a doubt that the poor thing will never work in the West End again. The play itself, a rather childlike tale of adul adultery and revenge, suffered less than criticism thanks only to Miss Fly's scene-stealing awfulness. I thank her wholeheartedly for our most enjoyable evening. I look forward to seeing you struggle with your next, I guess, event job, whatever, so. Oh, I'm sorry, that pulls that up again. I guess it's the same either way. For some reason I thought there was another. Yep, it's the same thing. For some reason I thought there was another spot to click on here. I see nothing in the cabinet, so. All right, we'll have to come back later for that whole clock situ situation, so. What is that noise, anyway? Let me check something really quick before I continue on. Alright. Just double checking something really quick, so. I was actually seeing if I could get the uh, um, phone to ring again. I can't go forward. Okay. Let's uh, go back. I was just seeing if I could get it to ring. Let's see. Okay. I go back upstairs. Okay. Actually, let me go. Yeah, let me go through these fours first. I was actually on the wrong floor, so. Okay. Let's see. Looks like a painting room. This is supposed to be the third floor. I was starting the second floor, but I was like, wait a minute. I want to go to the third floor first. I said that earlier, but I was like, well, I might as well check when I'm here, so. Hmm. It's supposed to be this guy, huh? Is that George Crabtree, perhaps? 
or just some random person. I'm surprised that there's not cobwebs ever, everywhere. But then again, Pete was our brother was here, so maybe he cleaned up a lot of this place. Who knows? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Table four, a record maybe. It's hard to say on the rest of it, so hmm. something to keep note of. Let's see a bunch of books. But unfortunately, I can't really read what they say. It's too blurred, at least for my vision. I do need, actually need to improve, uh, get a new prescription. My uh, eyes are getting bad. Yeah, I'm getting old. Turpentine, Arthur's Magic Lemon Ink. Lemon Ink? Huh. Well, they say lemon can get out a lot of stains. Uh, Zig V R C. Z I G S V I R G S R M P R G D L F O W Y V D R H V G L D I R G V L M I or L F I I V X L. Uh, basically, it's a. I'm not gonna say the whole thing. So something something, Blith George. So what this is is this is a uh, uh, a crypto note or whatever. There's a way to solve it. We can actually find the solution for that on the uh, 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 previous four. Okay. Uh, okay. The game is going to let me go back for some reason. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. For some reason it wasn't letting me like close it for some weird reason. So, okay. Well, actually, this is a. Um, uh, if we go back to the second floor, there's actually a, um, a cryptogram that tells us what this is. Uh, I'll tell you what it is now, and then we'll go back to the second floor, and I'll show you what that actually means. But the tra basically translated the, the the all this, what this says is the cryptology is basically the alphabet flipped backwards. So this is, uh, for example, this Z is actually A, for example. That's what the cryptograph says when we actually find it. But I'll read it now for to tell you what it actually means. So it says, Arthur, I think it would be wise to write our records and drawings using uh, our, your invisible ink. I do not want the others to know of our plans just yet. Yours, George. So that's what's in here anyway. So back up. Let's see another picture. What the? It's flashing. Huh. Uh, nothing we can do about it, right? Yeah, it's just decided to flash in front of me. It's like, uh, it's like, this, this must be important. But we can't do anything about it. Well, that was weird. More pictures. Let's see what this is. Ooh, hello. Got a letter. Looks like it's a bird of some sort. More pictures of the old man. I said, I think that's Crabtree, but... Rural rides in the southern, western, and eastern co counties of England, together with yours in Scotland, and in the northern and midland counties of England and letters from Ireland by William Cobbett. The whole included many rides and tours never before repented, edited with an introductory introduction, notes, a bibliographical records of upwards of 900 persons mentioned in an index of places and bibliographical note. G.D.H. and Margaret Cole with numerous vignettes by John Nash and a map of Cobetts County by A.E. Taylor. London, Peter Davies, 1930. Huh. Oops. Okay. Anything else around here? Uh. Let's see. Try, oh. I was trying to, uh, hold on. Oh, there we go. I was trying to look at the stove as well. I was trying to do. Can I get the cups as well? Or is that just a... Nah, it just goes straight to that. So, okay. Well, I can't do anything with those, with those cups, so... Let's see if I can do anything with the... No, we can. That turns it on. That probably... It's like an old-fashioned stove or whatever, so... Okay. Let's uh, turn the gas on. Or not. Hmm. 
Oh, there it is right there. Let's turn that on. That'll turn on the gas. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay. Ah. Okay, so that paper we got, let's use that on this. See what happens. Betty, T-Y-M-A, Fly, Marcana, Grable, Frenic, and Edith, Hickson. Hmm. Let's turn that off. Huh, I wonder what that means. I'm not sure, but we don't want to leave that stove on because, you know, who knows what would happen with that, so. Alright, let's get out of here. Now, I just noticed this picture of a lady and some guys on a podium or something like that. It's hard to say. Huh. Okay. Uh-oh. What was that? Hmm. Well, let's head to... Let's check uh, the bathroom next. Which is down the... Oh, wait. Just to show it off, so... Different doors. Henry, I'm um, Henry the Eighth, I am. Henry the Eighth, I am, I am. I got married to the widow's door. She's been married seven times before, and everyone was an enemy. Enemy! <laughs> anyway, sorry. Right. Whoa, what the? Well, that's psychedelic. Let me look at that, so. Got a sink. You yeah, know, I guess. Is that another room or the mirror? Ooh, hello. Yeah, I guess we could wash up, I guess. Oh. Interesting. We can adjust the uh, light for some reason. Anything else here? Do a cabinet? Doesn't look like anything I can interact with, at least at the moment anyway, so. Now, let me close that up, so I go back. Right, I want it, that window to be set there. Now, oh, hello. See anything else here I can interact with? Nope, okay. Let's check this out. Uh, let's see, 0020000900005 mm. Those seem to be a random assortment of numbers, though. Well, remember those for later, so let's uh, go back. I think that's all I can do here anyway, so. Okay. Whoop. What the? Did you see that? Uh, maybe I've been drinking too much. It is three o'clock somewhere, am I right? The... Yeah, it keeps doing that, by the way. It wants us to follow it. I don't think so. Ooh. Hello. It's like we're in like a mini storage closet or something like that, so. Yeah, it could go up the stairs. Let me take a look. Vada... Vad Magam? Vemigam? Medicated toilet something? Rose, maybe? I can't see. Uh, Sophie's soap. Huh. Yeah, nothing else here, so. Take a look this way. Ooh, a letter. Mum, the water tank is playing up again. I think we should call the plumbers. Please, I don't want to repeat of last time. That filthy water ruined all the stock in the storeroom. What's the number for the plumber? I'll call him. Anyway, apart from that, I've done the stock check, too. Nothing much to report, except that someone is coming in here and moving stuff around. Nothing is missing, which is what makes it really strange. So what? We have a thief that doesn't like none of our stuff? That's a bit insulting. They haven't even touched the towels. It took me hours to sew the station name onto each one of them. And what happens? No one wants to nick them. Should be pleased, I suppose. Yeah, most people usually steal from the hotel where their towels are concerned for some reason. Because people are weird. Anyway, about this strange thief, somehow they're getting in here without my key. You haven't lent it to anyone recently, have you? I can't think of any other explanation. Unless it's one of George's ghost ghosts. That would be funny. A ghost that likes to tidy up shelves or cosmetic products. Betty X. P.S. I hate to moan, but I cannot practice while you listen to your music so loud. If I am not ready for music night, then we will both look like fools. I know why you like that song so much, and I want you to listen to it, but please, please keep it down tonight. I need to blow my trumpet. Oh, what a joke. Huh. Crowboro uh, Crow Household Goods, Discount Card, 0017, Heath Road, Dowerton, Dorset, Dowerton, 376. 
no no wears or no wears no wears fine hair products london five five or five two eight two and stock list so suppliers crow burrows household supplies doverton 376 current count 10 packets toilet roll supplier crow burrows household supplies doverton 376 ask for tommy current count eight packets some complaints about texture though maybe need different brand huh it's all was it charmin charmin or bust baby no uh shampoo supplier Nowhere's Cosmetic Products, London, eight two or 5282, only deliver on Tuesdays. Current count, four packets, maybe some missing. Towels, no need for new towels. Soften the existing ones. Current count, all present. Is there something wrong with them? Normally, people nick them. Bed linen, one full bed, set, was soiled last room, 2E. Can't really read the rest of it, so. Yeah, a little pot. Ooh. Didn't someone say something about hiding something in a kettle? Was it one of the notes or something like that? But anyway, grab a key. Anything else in there? Nope. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I forgot which... I mean, it was last episode, but still, I've slept since then. So, yeah, someone mentioned something about hiding a key in a... Uh, uh. <coughs> what type of ghost do that anyway, so... All right, well, anyway. Just like go there and go bleh and just leave. Anyway, let's head up onto the attic. Might as well go to the top floor first before anything else. So, all right, let's see what we got around here. Ooh, is this a boiler or something? Maybe. Chair. Now I've heard. Okay, let me check around and then I'll talk about what I'm talking about. Let's see, picture of the countryside. What's that? Is that James Madison? I think. I could be wrong, but it might be someone that just kind of looks like him. But you know, a famous picture of a president or whatever. Creepy. Yeah, so when, when traveling, yeah, back in the day, people would get like these big old suitcases and put stickers on them from places they used to be. I haven't, haven't traveled outside my own uh, state, though, unfortunately. Huh. Can't open it, though. Perhaps a key? Nope. No key? Nope. No keys open it. So we don't have anything right now. So we'll come back to that later. An old uh, noble woman? Another old noble woman? I feel like that one looks familiar. Like, I've heard seen that before. Like, in an art, art piece or something like that. Well, that wasn't creepy. No, oh, hello. It's like a Ouija board. Oh, we got a new feature of the game. Well, new feature. It's always been there, but it doesn't come up too often. Is that because of the way the system works? If we want to say something, we have to actually type it into the, the keyboard here. So we can ask the Ouija board some, some questions and uh, see if it actually answers us. So maybe we can talk to some spirits. This is completely optional, by the way. You don't have to do this. So, all right, let's try the obvious one. Uh, name. I don't think, uh, I don't know if you have to put the actual question mark there, but what is your name? G, wait. Uh, hold on. Let me try that again. I wasn't paying. Uh, I missed that first part because <coughs> it doesn't highlight the. Okay, T, H. Is it Tom? Thomas? Okay, Thomas is his name. All right, Thomas. Your name's Thomas. And no viewers, I'm not moving it myself. It's clearly true. Ghosts are real. All right, let's try another one. Are you dead? I don't know. By the way, I don't know every single question you can ask this thing, so you'll have to forgive me. Yes, you are dead. Don't wouldn't ghosts not know they're dead though? Like, isn't that the thing about them? They think they're alive in some weird sense. So, how about can you help me? Even though we could always ask uh, Timmy for that, but can you help me? Oh, all right. Well, you have to be very specific on about that. So, all right. Let's try. You 
must do the the true tree trial. Yeah, that's a, uh, actually that's I wouldn't say that's a spoiler per se, but that's for the end of the game. So yeah, you must do the trials. Okay, you want me to do the trials, huh? Perhaps that'll release you all or something crazy like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's really all the big the big questions I think uh, that I really. I wonder if you can ask where my brother is. See if they respond to that. Nope, he doesn't respond to that question. Okay. Uh, or he doesn't know the answer. Nope, okay. Yeah, like I said, I don't remember every single question. There are certain ones that are pretty obvious. There are probably someone online has probably figured out all the all the ones, but that's pretty much the only ones we want, so that's a fun little thing you could do. I probably could have looked up all the questions you could do for that, but, uh... Alright, well, anyway, let's go back up here. Yeah, this one's like the heater or boiler or something like that. Now, from what I understand, there, there's... Apparently there's some... A slight amount of randomness to this game. Because I've heard that this, uh... This boiler could already be turned on by now. Like, uh, and so, like if you take forever to get here, it'll already be on, so you don't want to mess with this. Or maybe it's a random thing. Like, maybe some... the If you... If you take forever to do something, the game will automatically do stuff for you. It's hard to say. I mean, you have to put something in there, but I don't know what. Okay. I don't know if you heard that, but it sounds like uh, we opened a valve or something like that. But yeah, sometimes this will be already ready to go, and sometimes it won't be. So I don't know what figures out if it's based per playthrough or if it's based on how long you play or whatever. So it, I like I said, I can't really say. All right. Let's see. Okay, now it's on. Yeah, the, what those are is just the flame to look at the uh, the um, look at to say, hey, this thing's on now. So that's what the point of that little slit is for. So okay, let's see. Let's do this. Okay, then we want to flip this. Okay. Okay, that should be all I need to do for now, anyway. Okay, so that what that does is that turns on the hot water on the first floor bathroom, I believe. We'll get to there eventually, so. Alright. Let's see, let me go back to that suitcase. I forgot I actually, I actually had a solution for that. Okay, let's do that again. So we need to use a screwdriver. So the way this works is we're basically trying to pick the lock, even though technically a screwdriver won't be able to pick the lock, but whatever. So left, right, left, right. There we go. Yeah, it's left, right, left, right, down is how you're supposed to um, uh, pick it open. So. Oh, there's uh, The Wonderful World of Oz. I've actually read some of the books. I haven't read all of them yet, though, so they're pretty quick reads, actually. You'd be surprised. Uh, but, yeah, Frank Albaum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. That's what that one is. Uh, when they told told it on the radio, it terrified the whole country. The War of the Worlds. Yeah, people were scared when, when they did that broadcast back in the day because people only had the radio, so that's all they could trust. It was easy to fall for something like that. So It feels quite nefarious creeping around the hotel in the dead of night, asking favors of complete strangers, hiding my scraps of knowledge in secret places. Perhaps it's become a deadly game, some sort of lethal puzzler. The evil has haunted me so long, I can hardly remember anything else, except Arthur, of course, it is here with me. I can sense it watching me from the dark corners of this attic. It whispers quietly, soothingly promising temptations and exploration. How easy it would be. Who are you anyway? I leave you notes, clues, and guidance. I do not even know your name. It is obvious I will fail. Otherwise, I would not need you. Please help me. I am sorry. I am astute enough to realize that your being here means that it has been as fed again. Was it you? Was it a loved one, perhaps? 
my thoughts are gone are with you. I hope my body rots in the ground in your time, decayed, unknown, and unloved. Do not pity me, these thoughts is all I can wish for. You see, if I bow, if I failed, which I obviously did, otherwise you would not be reading this. It means as it has my soul kept in containment, formed. That's how it feeds, you know. Has it fed again? Is that why you are here? Will we ever write ourselves of this uh, miscreation? The ancients who understood the nature of this beast always succeeded in trapping it. Here, what more can I lend to you? My journal, if you have not read it already, will inform you how Arthur and I released our opponent. I hope it is of some use to you as I sit here writing this. I wonder what it in your world would amaze me. I know nothing about you or your existence. I also wonder if my family missed me. I doubt it. They may be wealthy, but that is never a guarantee of happiness and of mor immortality. Hopefully they burnt this place after this night. And these words flickered and died in a white heat along with all the others. Ever yours, my unnoticed friend, George. And we just uh, found out that guy is dead because we just did the Ouija board and it's, it said his name was George. So he's trying to help us defeat this thing because he doesn't want to be around anymore. Whatever is going on here. Ah, and we get a neck, the neck, another symbol. So remember to write the symbol down and what it says here. The lyric for the symbol is Olviak. Okay. Remember that for later. Yeah, I think that's it for this. So yeah. And by the way, you do need to you do need to figure out these, uh, what these are. Like it's required to know about them to remember them. You do need to write them down. But we need to actually find it. So okay. Anyway, I think that's it for this for this for now. I don't know if we have to go back later. Maybe. Okay. Let's go. Let's go back out here. I want to go to. Oh yeah, some of these rooms aren't actually labeled, so I want to go to this room first. Oh. Yeah, something on the door here. I can interact with it, but. I can't do anything. Huh. But it's locked. However, do we get inside this thing? Hmm. Well, let's try that again. Remember back in, uh, well, for those who watched my Mystery of the Mummy playthrough with uh, Sherlock Holmes, remember how sometimes there might be keys uh, uh, in the lock and you get them under the door? Well, a lot of people use this kind of method, so let's put the paper under the under the slide it under the door there and then use the screwdriver great minds think alike and we get the key for the door all right let's grab that paper right obviously nowadays that wouldn't be the same either the door would be dead bolted or something like that and we wouldn't really be able to get inside because that's just how that is so all right so now we're inside. Let's uh, let's take a look around. Green lamp, huh? Got some pictures on the wall. Let's see. It looks like a guy who's either in the army or the Boy Scouts. Oh, hello. Arthur Johnston, HMT3A, Ryan Down Barracks, Eastbourne. Okay, he was army. Hello, George. I have to be quite careful, and I believe it's George uh, Crabtree or whatever. So that's the so the guy on this place. Hello, George. I have to be quite ca uh, careful with what I write. So I I think Captain Barkett Barkett or Barlett. It's hard to say. Barkett re re reads the post. No worries though. It's great here. Not the like we thought. The other chaps are great fun, and I'm learning a lot of things I never ever dreamed of in Dowerton. Still miss the old place, though, and you, of course, especially today. There's, there is word going around that tomorrow night is the big move. Some big wigs from London arrived, and they spent the whole night in the operations room. So it looks like this is it. Do not worry, I'm not nervous. Just, I just want to get the thing over and done with. Sort them out once and for all. That should not take that long, as we are all off or ready to go. No looking back. Think of me. How are things there? I regret leaving you with things. Uh, have they been any further developments? I still think you should go to the police. I'll swear on the Bible if, if it will help matters. Right soon. I am told we can still get our post uh, sent. I do not see how. Right anyway. I'll get it one day. How is my studio? 
You can clear away my stuff if you need more space. I can unpack it all when I return. Can't. Uh, can't I? Yes, I'll do that. Pack my stuff away for now. It'll not be for long, I promise. Say hello to Edith for me and tell her I miss her cooking. It's horrible. It's horrible food here. But you cannot, but we cannot grumble. Also, tell Betty that she had better practice good home uh, coming tune. I'll expect the best. Uh, I've got to go now. Uh, less time than I thought. We're, we're, we are MP earlier than normal. Uh, which can only mean one thing. I'm going to go now and you will not think of me again until I step off that train in platform one. All will be as it should be. You will be waiting by the buffet. Uh, but Betty will be waiting with a nice pint of beer. Edith will have one of her famous rabbit pies in the stove. I can see it now. This thought alone will help me strong, Tiff. I come home. Till I come home, sorry. You must not think too much while I'm away. You have enough problems as it is. I'll be back to help you defeat our miscreant. Uh, my thoughts are all my thoughts are with you. See you soon, Arthur. Interesting. A family member caring about his brother. Like we are doing now. Yeah, Edith. Huh. Okay. Uh, Mortimer and Partners. Uh, solicitors. 25 Facets SQ London. Gloria Grable. Garble. Reliable Garg? Barlia? Lobel. Aloria? Arable? Damn. Who the devil is she? That car, perhaps. It's the car that arouses my suspicious nature. Very expensive. Too expensive for most. So why stay in this hotel? It's not exactly the Savoy, is it? I'll ask Edith if she has any thoughts on the matter. I think a quick look over that car would be quite rewarding. I wish Arthur were here. He would offer such wonderful, clear advice and probably enjoy it too. He had such spirit. He may even have been able to offer some assistance with my nemesis. It's hiding down there, waiting, plotting, growing its strength. It consumes my mind. God damn it to hell. There's a symbol there. Remember that. If is this grabble woman part of its plan? Maybe I'm losing my mind. I'll start to suspect everyone soon. Oh God, help me! I must return to my research. It is the only route to victory. The ancient runes are difficult, but I will break their code. I must. Ugh. An extraordinary discovery, quite by accident as well. Arthur and I were pottering about in the cellar. We were both wondering if we could determine the seller's age or the whereabouts of Tom Oli Oli Olivier's Ol or Oliver's final resting place. The tale dates back years, and I have never taken it too seriously. Arthur finds it fascinating and a little romantic, but it's lost to me. Nevertheless, we took it upon ourselves, rather arrogantly, to solve the Oliv uh, Oliver mystery. Jolly exciting. My art skills are appalling when compared to Arthur's skills, but this is a rough copy of Tom's. <laughs> Okay. Oliver, Oliver, which I based on the old drawings hanging in the bar. Anyway, I digress. We found no sign of Tom, but instead we discovered our, an antechamber. There's a layman marker in the small room, no doubt, announcing the date of the origin. I3, I8. Construction, local tales and stories have always implied that there was an inn at this location for several centuries, but the layman's stone bears the date one, or 1318. Sorry, I don't know why I said I. Amazing what, what a find. Tomorrow we'll try and discover what significance the stone might have. So I've decided to keep a journal of our work. Number 8, 1944. Our discovery yesterday has left us both excited and puzzled. As far as you can do all this with World War II going on. We both agree that the library of the house may enlighten us to the hotel's original origin. There are numerous records and land odor deeds that we can search. Father built the hotel last century. It is well known that the building build was quickened by the existence of foundations. And that part of the original... In were still in existence, though there are few indications of what stood here before the 15th century. More is the pity. Well, we know that there was a building of some significance long before the end. The stone walls that we have found are not made of local stone, and the construction is of a high standard. The mind reels at the possibilities. Perhaps it was a chapel or other religious building. We are about to explore the room further, and I'll photograph it for our records. Number 9, 1944. This adventure gets more strange by the day. The antechamber was only the beginning. A further passage was revealed today. We are both tempted to announce our find. We are not archaeologists, and we both fear that we are damaging the ancient clues and artifacts. Arthur insists that we push on and save the announcement until we have something truly impressive to show up. I feel that Arthur wants fame and riches. He is young, and I will entertain his fancy. 
I must admit, it is a strange confession that I have the most overwhelming feeling of unease this day. I put it down to nervous excitement at first, but it is not so easily defined. There is something about the chamber that scares me to my soul. I made the decision that we should not explore further until we researched further. Arthur was stubborn and it came around to my thinking. November 10, 1944. The last two days have changed everything. I do not know where to start. It is not our fault. It cannot be our fault. We are not to know. The chamber is not as we or anyone could understand. It is both extraordinary and baffling, beyond faith and beyond reason. There is a power, a rippling energy that plays across its walls and ceilings. It is a godless power and has no place in our world. Arthur was terrified. I was too shocked and in awe of its luminescence. Wondrous, a thousand voices whispering us from beyond the stones. A thousand voices in perpetual confusion. We removed ourselves as quickly as possible. I fear it was not fast enough. There was time. Just enough time. A splinter, in fact. Enough for something to fall us back through the passage. I felt it, and I heard it. The whispering. Arthur felt it, too. He described it as darkness. Darkness with a form or existence. Or no form or existence. What the devil was it? We sealed the chamber again. And I'll hide it as well as I can. Though I already know what it is too late. We are fools. But we were not to know. There is no way we could know. I fear for our souls. I fear for all our souls. Why have we released? I remember enough of what we saw to draw a few sketches. I should have had my camera. Damn stupid fool. November 15th, 1944. It saddens and terrifies me to write these words. Arthur and I were right in our fears. It is here, here with us in the hotel. I've experienced the most bizarre and unnatural visions. The dead are here, all around us. I have seen and heard them. Edith suspects that something is wrong, but as yet she has not experienced anything supernatural. Perhaps it only, will only affect Arthur and I. Our own personal torment is our punishment for curiosity. I hope so. No one else should have to live with our knowledge. All is not a misery. We plan to study our foe, discover its power and agenda. We have already decided that seems to have some sort of affinity with the dead. That may be our key to his existence. The chamber, no doubt, would prove valuable. Has uh, no doubt would prove valuable clues. But we will not venture into its depths until we are sure of what we are doing. Spectral nocturnal wraiths wander the halls of the hotel. I see them out of the corner of my eye. The guests are ignorant to them, which is a blessing. November 28, 1944. The pressure of the research and the presence of the darkness is taking the toll on Arthur. He is a being as brave as his wits allow, but he is spending less and less time in his studio. Nothing would make me more happy than to free him of this burden, but I am not prepared for him to spend more time at home. His father is a bully. We will not leave him until he signs up. I will not permit Arthur to go to war. We have a war of our own. One more casually would make no difference at the, to the battle. Arthur's place is here, aiding me to understand our nemesis. I do not use that word lightly. I felt for some time that it has some plan for us. I, te it, I tease, it, te it teases, I think it's supposed to be E, but uh, it, but it says, I teases and tempts us. It whispers at my door throughout the night. What fate would befall me if I, were o if I opened the door? Would it be there? Would it be waiting for me? Would my voice join one of those many, many voices in the hall, hell mouth beneath us? December 3rd, 1944. A trip to London has been most fruitful. Our hurried sketches have proved invaluable. The chamber was decorated with symbols. I think they are called runes, which have a definite figurative significance. If we can decode them, we may be able to work our way of retrapping the darkness. The library of the British Museum is vast and confusing, but I was able to find similar symbols in alchemical works and dictionaries. We need more symbols than the real work can begin. All is not lost. Yeah, we've run into that chamber already, by the way. December 6, 1944. I've calmed down now. A half ass, a half a hour ago, is it half ass? I think so. A half ass hour ago, I could have exploded. Arthur returned to the chamber without my knowledge. Stupid young fool! He thought it the only way. Perhaps he's right. His finding is invaluable. Our breath take a bre breakthrough, even though time is of the essence, is becoming more bold by the day. I, it is my belief that Betty has experienced some unnatural phenomenon. I caught her creeping around the hall under the cover of dark. What was she seeking? Has she seen something that has aroused her suspicion? I dare not ask her, as I would have to confess our guilt. I'm playing with the idea of telling Edith that I believe the hotel is to be haunted. It is a wise precaution and would make our activities less suspicious. It could also bring a whole wealth of new business to the hotel, which is not something I wish to encourage. Not until we have set things back. Back as they should be, anyway. 
Anyway, Arthur's discovery is a piece of vellum, animal skin. He found it stuffed between two of the stones. It is illustrated all over with symbols that catch the light in the most extraordinary way. Perhaps they share a power with the symbols of the chamber. There are twelve symbols in all. They are quite clear and definite. The arrangement is also quite specific, and I believe that they will be an incantation. We will set to work on it immediately. We've also seen that as well. I think the vellum, we've also seen that as well. Uh, December 13th, 94-4. We saw it in the bathroom where we could adjust the uh, mirror. Arthur has made his decision. He will sign up. His father has got his way, and all is now ghastly in my world. We have two precious days, and then a new fear and doubt will consume our world. December 15th, 1944. He is gone. I could not bring myself to see him off. The train platforms were crowded and loud. I now regret my decision. I can only hope that this war will be brought to a swift end. Following the advance in June, the Germans have lost their grip. The Americans have combined forces, and the general feeling is that this conflict will be over soon. I hope it is very soon. I will miss him. 24th December, 1944. The night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I wish these words were true, but they are not. It is growing in strength, becoming bolder, more astute. It tricks me, guides me, calling me back to that chamber. I must resist. The artifact, the vellum, is still my main source of defense. I am either losing my mind, it is also some power. It calls to me. When I hold it in my hands, I hear it. A voice. Okay, maybe we haven't seen the vellum yet. I was thinking of something else. A clear and definite voice. What? Words spoken in a strange tongue. But I see the words in my mind. This will be our salvation. I can feel it. I'll begin to note, note down the words. December 28, 1944. There's nothing to write. There's nothing to say. He's dead. March 22nd, 1945. Much time has passed and many things have changed. Arthur will be in my mind forever. But enough time has passed for me to continue the work. Yeah, he died on uh, that day. From what? It doesn't matter. It's the war. Uh, many things have changed. Arthur will be in my mind forever. Oh, say, uh, the hauntings are more apparent now. The others have witnessed them. The darkness is strong. My fear is almost complete. All is not lost, however, as I now know what I must do. My role in this uh, in this act is very clear. I must bring myself to complete the ceremony. This place has witnessed the ceremony many times before. I follow in the footsteps of actions of many who are not even a distant memory. They are long since gone, and only time is a way uh, of any knowledge of their existence. Why well, join their ranks? I have been suppressing the darkness, which I now think of as the dark fall. Roll credits, with the lyrics left me. I am beginning to understand the order, and soon I will venture into the chamber and complete my role. What I wonder lies beyond the final door. The journey will not be without hardship, as I have learned to the trials. There are three in all, and they must be understood and mastered before. I can advance further. It is a test. A test of my work. Those ancient warriors were wise and devious. The powers with which they act are beautiful to behold. How could so much that impresses me be lost to the, that way of time in our time? What have we gained instead? Modern science? I think not. The country lies in poverty in a state of frenzied repair. The V2 smashes and destroys our homes and our lives. What power is that? A useless talent. Why did the old ones not pass on their gifts? Were they guardians? Keeping the dark fall in its prison? Did they not see that one day it might be released? Uh, no one ever thinks about that. Perhaps they were as arrogant as we. Never once thinking that anything could threaten them. A stupid idea which I hope to explode. April 16, 1945. The belief is that the war is nearly over. Mark my war. My... My war has taken me a new twist. The Darkfall hates me. I sense it seething and screaming at its own pathetic entrapment. I fear it will strike at me soon, which is why my new discovery is all the more important. I have found a second chamber. A cave, more like. It is under the old Tithe Barn. Oh, sorry, that's the one we found. My bad. Mixing up my knowledge is here. We haven't found the first one. Anyway, containing something of invaluable uses. This is where, this is where if you read this, this tells you about the go and check, finding the barn to find it, because if you didn't find it already. My key, and with the Dark Falls nemesis, with each night I'll lose a part of my sanity. The village looks at me through patronizing eyes. Little do they know. April 30th, 1945. Yeah, we've seen that symbol too. A tyrant is dead. All the world feels different, including my own. I am closer than ever now. I must plan my actions well. I may only get one chance. The trials await. I know how to break the first. It is a simple puzzler. An order. I memorize the key, but my mind fails me so often these days. I've taken precautions. Vernie is here, and as usual for this time of year, he has a safe box with him. 
Ingenious in design, I have commissioned several from the manufacturer. By the way, I believe that's when uh, the, that date is when uh, I don't know if it's when Hitler's discovered, like and he was destroyed, or it was when the uh, like the, the war was over, that type of thing. Uh, I don't remember the details. It's been forever since I studied World War II uh, history and stuff like that. They could keep my secrets hidden away from prying eyes. Those facts that could never be hidden can be recorded. I've asked Edith to make me a bed cover. Her skills are wondrous, a true talent for design. I've hidden the key to the first trial within its weavings. It is unique, such colors. She could almost have seen the aurora itself. The second trial is less secure. They conjure the sounds of the earth to confuse. I'll break its riddle. Then the third trial awaits. All must be ready. One, two, three, four. Whoops. Wait, was that it? Hold on. Sorry, did I accidentally click on... Okay, yeah, there's more. I just accidentally clicked off of the all the all that. So, whoops, sorry. March fourteenth, nineteen forty-seven. Exhausted, they said. I agree to disagree. A wasted year is all that is certain. A year of wondering and fear. Uh, let's see, how long has it been since? Oh yeah, it's been two years since he read this thing, wrote this thing. A year of wondering and fear. I was relieved to find, as I stepped off that train, that a little has changed. Only Betty seems different, older, more secretive. Does she work against me? I think back to that night when I found her creeping around the darkened hallways. Has the evil recruited? Is she here to hinder me? I think not. It is my paranoia on my part. My break has restored me. Either the recommended Hastings, the sea air, and the frivolous frivolity humor me. I thought of Arthur often and what he would have made of it. Enough. There is work to be do. I feel the time is right. It is now or never. I cannot afford to have a second lapse. I will gather my notes and break the lyrical order and finish this tournament for good. April 26th, 1947. All is set. I have ripped the lyrics into 12 pieces. That way it is safer. As a whole, it is vulnerable. I will distribute the pieces to those that will take them. They must guard them. The ceremony will be completed, and they will have no idea. The bar will be full in three nights' time. Edith has planned another mystic music night. I will feel encouraged during the trials, knowing that there is a room full of people immediately above me. Perhaps I will hear them sing and laugh. I will look forward to joining them all once my act is complete. I, uh, April 26, 1947. Damn, damn, damn! It's worked against me. Stolen some of the lyrics. I must remember. No better than that. I can see them. I know how. I must arrange the elements. We've seen that before, Symbol. April 29, 1947. All is ready. I will take a second journal with me to note down my progress. I or someone else may need it in the future. Others made the mistake of not passing on the knowledge. I was right. The bar is busy. I have given the existing symbols to Edith, Betty, Vernie, and the guests. They know now not why. I am so nervous. Soon all this will be over, one way or the other. Wish me luck, Arthur. I do this for us. Perhaps I will see you soon. I would like that. George. I saw eternity the other night, like a great ring of pure and endless light, all calm as it was bright. Henry Vaughn, 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 whatever, 1622 to 1695. And we know he failed. Well, we actually don't know if he's particularly failed per se. We just know that the 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 thing's still around, or it, or maybe it came back. It's hard to say, but it's assumed he failed, or at least didn't finish it properly. Something like that. George, thought you might find this uh, emitting emitter emitting of use. Seems like I've solved one of your problems. I think we should have a little chat about it, because if the others find out, including the press, this place will turn into a bloody circus. Please come out of your room. We hardly see you these days. What is it that bothers you so? Maybe we could help if we knew. Uh, knew. Nice Miss, Mr. Verney doesn't even know what's wrong. Is within, is is another that is upsetting you? I know you still miss him, Edith. Huh. The Weekly Gossip. Includes magazine, April 28th, 1947, evening edition. Uh, increasing fears that the terror merchants may be, may be about to strike again. An increased guard has been put on the Duke. Night, uh, NC the attack, so police are not taking the chances. The something still has to list before can be taken, work out exactly who's behind the operation. A close aide to the Duke pointed out to the gatherers, reporters, it is unclear who it is. Uh, great new food offers are promised as from next week when a huge shipment of spam processed tin meat of variable origin finally arrives on these shores from the USA. Top sh London chefs are putting the finishing touches to a new book entitled Make Your Man Happy with Spam. <laughs> Which they hope will revolutionize the way we look at tinned meats. Francis Minway said, I love spam, I guess. I assume. 
police officer yesterday had something to admit defeat after it was revealed that the notorious lady, ba lady bank robber Sly Fox has evaded capture once again. After a carefully planned operation masterminded by head of Scotland Yard, Christopher Marsh, the suspect fled her home in London, Mayfair at speed. No one else was seen with her, which destroyed theory that she always worked with a great uh, getaway driver. Officer warning something. Huh. Why does he have the why does he have a thing about that? Anyway, let's look at some uh, some uh, lovely pictures of some lovely ladies. Whoops. Uh yeah, let's just say that they're uh, for Lonely guys, if you know what I mean. Dorstershire Archaeological Society. Dr. Felicity Bates, the Shires. Trepperton, uh, Dorset. Dear Mr. Crabtree, I puzzle as to why you've not taken the time to reply to any of my previous letters. Are you no longer interested in archaeology? We have near conclusive evidence that indicates that beneath your hotel may be a cave network or possibly an ancient site worth of excavation. Our recent dig at nearby Little Quarry Farm was most interesting. The northeast area of Dowerton is literally riddled with the subterranean springs, caves, and channels. This network could, without a doubt, continue under your pro property. We've also approached other members of your family as we were also interested in a possible dig at Crabtree Manor. We received a definite no. You have not replied at all. Are you thinking it over? I am more than willing to visit and explain exactly what work and disruption to your business would result from the dig. I like you would like the process or I like you would like the process to proceed as easily and quickly as possible. I remember that you were once interested in DAS and even thought about joining us as a sponsor and member. What has changed your mind? Please contact me as soon as possible. This could be one of the most important excavations this century of Dorset. It would be wonderful if you could be part of it. Yours, Felicity Bates, F Bates, from the Dorsetshire Archaeological Society. Huh. Well that was a lot of yeah, that book uh, told us a lot of information about what was going on. And how to defeat the thing, basically. So, are you afraid of the dark? Well, I mean, I wouldn't be if you watched the uh, Canadian show I'm talking about. Uh, astrology. Uh, Andrew Verney, a book of myths and legends. Uh, supernatural. Uh, something I can't see. Ivan. Mishax or whatever. Celtic Tales and Legends by P. Sessler. Beyond Death by Rebecca Tower. Chasers. The Maker and the Misery by T. Coles. And we got ourselves a camera here. All right. Let's see. Uh, just a window to look at. Let's see. More pictures there. And we got, ooh, hello. Have we seen the symbol before? Yeah, Darkness Falls. While carving the monoliths. Yeah, we saw all of that. In the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is this a possible order? Oh, yes. Remember that for later. There's the symbol again. Magic Lantern, Slide Index. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 to 8. 2, 3, and 7 seem to be missing. Pitch, Dram, Redder, Operator, 5, Mortem, 6, cap, Capitulate, Sive, 7, Fortim, and 8, Crimius, uh, Kramus, whatever. Yeah, didn't we see something that had some names mentioned before on, uh, on a little notepad or something like that? So, but anyway, uh, let's see. All right, let's back up here. Uh, anything else? Oops. Ah, the trash. Okay, of the hoots dead for it, but all has some. Okay, let's. Yeah, sorry, I have to. Nope, not quite. Let's see, we just have to put this all together. Okay, it's always easy to do the corners first, because then, you know, corners. Okay, let's lower that a bit. So, four. There we go. Okay, and then that goes up there. That probably goes right below it. Okay, where's the other one? There. No, that's not quite. Here we go. Yeah, pretty close. I don't think it snaps into place if I recall it, it, but it gets pretty close to doing that, so. Okay, let's put that there. Move those over to the side. There's that. Okay, I guess we pulled out all the, everything we needed, so let's see, what is, okay, that goes at the top. Oh, did I, 
put that too high, I guess. There we go, there's that. Oh, sorry. Just uh, get that. Oops. I don't know why that's higher than that. That's that's weird. I guess I'll lower this down a bit then. There we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. That should go there. That one goes there. Come on. That's pretty close. There we go. And finally. Now, like I said, it doesn't have to snap into the place. It just has to generally be there. So, okay. I never imagined I would have to put these words down on paper. I wish I did not have to write this note. Uh, but something must be said in the way of an explanation. Oh, what I've done is too late for sympathy. I released it. It tricked me. I promise I had no intention to let it loose. Why would I? It's here now. I foolishly thought that perhaps, well, perhaps it would bring Arthur back. It would whisper at my door. It would creep and hide in the dark shadows of the hotel. It would conjure up the dead for its pleasures and feeding. But all the time I thought that I had some power over it. The ancient runes hold the key to its bondage. If only. Yeah, if only. If only such. All right. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I forgot to. Okay, let's check this out. Yeah, it'll run a little bit long, but, uh, you know, I want to finish this room before we call it, so. Ooh. Hello. Let's see what that says. Huh, doesn't seem to be anything. Perhaps, uh... Oh, there we go. A study of local trees. A film by G. Crabtree. I think it just keeps repeating after that, so. All right, let's try this one. Fascinating. Yeah, it's old, uh, old pictographs or whatever. Trial two. Okay. So fire, lightning, like clouds. Lighthouse, ocean, waves. The end. Huh. Interesting. Well, there must be a clue on how to solve the second trial. Alright, let's try this one. A possible haunting. That would be up. We've seen those before. Those little uh, will o wisps or whatever you want to call them. Or spirits. Alright, that's it for that one, I believe. Yep, okay. And finally, the other one. Let's see what this one says. Yeah, yeah some spirit in the bathroom or something like that, huh? Another possible haunting, so. All right, anything else, or was it just those? I think there's supposed to be another one somewhere around here, I believe. Let me turn that off for now. Let me take a back up. Whoops. Back up a bit. Let's 
See, I don't think I checked this box actually. I forgot to do that, so. Oh, hello. It's like a man in a. Let's remove that one. Let's see, like a circus tent. And then that one was the man in the. Yeah, uh, the uh, tent or whatever. Another tent, but a different type of tent. Another type of tent, a different one. All types of tents, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything really... Let me try that out one more time. Let's see. See, that's one, two. Oh, ho, oh, there's a symbol there. Hmm. I remember that for later. Yeah, that's a. Uh, I forgot the name of that one. That one's number 10, by the way. The symbol of the. I think it's like. Um, uh, I think it's like Mortem, I believe. So, but yeah, we found, so that symbol means we found it. So, okay. So that's that one. Okay. Eh, let's see. Yeah, we already found out about what the second trial is. Uh, so remember that to mention that's fire, lightning, wind, and water is what we saw there. So, okay, well, looks like this, uh, looks like this mystery Looks like this mystery is there's more to it. At least we have now have an idea to fight the foe. However, to fight the foe, we must get the 12 lyrics and summon the great being. Oh, wait, no, I don't. I, I was about to do some anime thing, you know, or or we need to gather the 12 MacGuffins to defeat this thing or whatever. But no, we know how to fight the thing. Now we must find all the symbols in the household. But can we find all the symbols? What evils do the, the hauntings have? Will they just be spooky or will they actually do something to us? And what other horrible stories will we hear in this hotel? We'll find out next time in the next episode of Dark Fall, The Journal. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.